Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the year 2021. What a delight it is to see so many people whose faces I haven't either seen for a while or have only seen on Zoom from the shoulders up. So it's, it's, isn't it nice to be out and the sun is shining and the day looks bright and endearing and to be able to be together again, even with masks on and six feet apart. It gives us a sense that life will, in fact, go on. So, welcome. This morning, uh, the service is a bit of a hybrid. Uh, originally, uh, Rhonda Schofield was going to be doing the service, and she is. Uh, but you, and no, I'm not her. Uh, but she, uh, she found out that, in fact, that uh, First Baptist, where she also has a placement, uh, was now going to be open this Sunday for people to be attending, and therefore she couldn't be in two places at once. Uh, so she, ha- she prepared the service, uh, and she has uh, delivered the sermon, which will be on the screen. And uh, I will try to glue the rest of the pieces together for us. Okay. If we can move further then to the call to worship, which should be on the screen, I think. And and, uh, you can read responsively the print that is in bold. God said, let there be light. God said, let there be a dome to separate the waters. God said, let there be land and earth and vegetation. Come and worship the God who speaks the words of creation. Amen. It has been said that we should light a light rather than curse the darkness, and into our presence we invite the light of Christ, represented by this brand new Christ candle. And as we quieten our hearts and listen for the voice of God, let us listen to the sound of the singing bowl, which reminds us where we are and why we are here. Water of life, present at the creation of the universe. Water of life, present at our birth. Water of life, present at the baptism of Jesus. We remember that at these times, not only was there water, but also the voice of God was experienced and felt speaking to us. God. God. We come this morning to be filled with your living water, to listen to your voice. Amen. The first hymn is hymn number 100, and I'll invite the uh, brave choir members who are going to come up and help lead us with that hymn, because as you know, at the present time, we're not allowed to sing. But I think you can hum behind your mask if you like.
The scripture today will be Psalm 51, 6 to 17, and Luke 3, 1 to 22. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice, If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And from Luke 3, 1 to 22. The proclamation of John the Baptist. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Capias, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the foot at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. 
As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. The baptism of Jesus. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God spoke and creation leapt into being. Let there be light, and there was light. Let there be a vault between the waters from above and the waters below. The waters were divided, and the sky was created. Let the waters under the sky be gathered to one place. Let there be dry land. Land and sea were separated. Let the land produce plants and trees, trees with seed-bearing fruit, Green shoots emerged from the ground. Let there be great lights to guide our days, to mark our time. Two great lights were created, the sun to illuminate the day, the moon to warm the night. The stars were also put into place. Let there be creatures of all sorts to swim in the waters and to fly in the sky. Be fruitful and increase in number was the command. The fish began to swim, the birds began to soar. Let the land also produce creatures of all sorts, and animals began to graze. Let us also create humankind in our image, our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and all creatures on earth. So God created humankind in God's own image. The image of God created them. From the void, from the darkness, from the empty and from the chaos of disorganization came light, came sky, came the seas, came the land, the plants, the trees, the fruits, all things green and growing. From the void came the sun and moon, the stars, came the creatures, the sea, creatures of the sea, those who soar and those animals who dwell on land. From nothing at God's word came humankind, came our ancestors, our friends, our family, came you, came me. The voice of God started our story and the voice of God continued. You brood of vipers, cried John from the side of the river where the crowd had gathered that morning. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. Whoever has food must do likewise. Collect no more than what is due you. Do not extort money. Be satisfied with what you have. 
Our gospel goes on to tell us that those who were gathered began to question who John was and wondered if John himself might have been the Messiah. John replied, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I baptize you with water. Water. Water that filled the void. Water that covered the surface of the deep. Water over which the Spirit of God hovered when our story was spoken into being. Water, older than the sun, present at the beginning, present when the rains fell and the ark rose, present when Hagar needed it most, present to safely, safely deliver the Israelites, present at Jesus' birth and baptism. Water, present at all new beginnings. Luke seems to be telling us in this, that Jesus is a recreation of sorts. Things are being made new and different. It's a sort of starting over. Of course, we have the advantage of reading the story from a historical viewpoint. We also have great thinkers who help us make all these intertextual connections. But we also need to put ourselves in the mindsets of those seeing this happening and those hearing the words for the first time. Many of us understand water to be cleansing and necessary for life. Some of us here might even understand the molecular breakdown of water. They don't teach us that in theology school, believe it or not. But those who were gathered that day with John likely understood water as not only essential for life, but also a symbol of all that was chaotic and disorganized in the world. And indeed, we don't have to push the water metaphor too far in our own context to see the unsettling properties that can be associated with water. I think of the waters that surround our tiny coastal province here in Nova Scotia. I think of the lives lost at sea, the seas that surround us. I think of the damaging nature of strong waves called to shore by storm systems. I think of the absence of water that affects a farm's crop and subsequently our own tables. I think of rising food costs and the families right here who wonder where the next meal might come from. I think of water sources in our First Nations communities that are too contaminated for consumption. Water that is anything but cleansing and life-giving. I think of waters that are rising with global warming and the threat that that poses on our current way of being in the world. I think of the waters that fuel natural disasters and devastate fragile economies, fragile lives. I think of the water present in our shared humanity as tears fall in response to outrageous violence this week. You know, I found myself this week lamenting a line from one of my favorite psalmists. You might know him from you too as Bono. And the line, the line that I've been saying to myself over and over is how long, how long, how long must we sing this song? But Jesus' baptism is a reminder of a recreation, a reminder that things can and indeed are being made new. It is not coincidental that Luke hearkens our thinking back to the beginning, back to the creation. We might even wonder why Jesus, Emmanuel, the word made flesh, might need to be baptized at all. The gospel seems to agree that baptism serves as a repentance, a forgiveness of sins. But from what did Jesus have to repent? The question here is not really why was Jesus baptized, but rather why did Jesus, Jesus choose to be baptized? But just as we go through baptism, so too does Jesus go through baptism. Just as we go through life with all its pains and joys, so too did Jesus. Just as we are met with death, so too was Jesus. 
Jesus came and dwelled among us, acted like us, felt like us, and experienced life like us so that we might learn to act like him. But it is more than an act, it's a reality. Jesus was one of us, and through baptism we are recreated so that we can live as Jesus lived, so that we can serve as Jesus served and love as Jesus loved. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God spoke, and creation leapt into being. In our creation narrative, there is the one who speaks, the one who comes as the wind, and the one who comes through water. In Luke's telling of Jesus' baptism, there is the one who speaks, you are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. There is the one who comes appearing as a dove, the one who comes through water. Luke echoes the creation narrative to emphasize God breaking into the world as a human being. The heavens, the barrier separating the human and the divine realms are torn. The Greek verb that's used in Luke suggests that this tear cannot be mended. There's nothing to put back together. God is now accessible to human beings, in human beings accessible to God. The God who used separation as a means of creation had an altered strategy for a world that had been ruptured, broken and battered by the barrier between creation and creator. The promised coming of God was taking place in the coming of Jesus. And when Jesus acts, God acts. All of creation, all our beginnings, are connected to water. There is no life without water. As Christians, our most common way of identifying our belonging to Christ's story is through the sacrament of baptism, a sacrament soaked with symbolism, soaked with water. Water serves as a conduit to a beginning, not an ending, a conduit through which Jesus came into our world to dwell among us, through his birth, through his baptism, through his life and death, and through all the trials therein, Jesus was immersed in our story. Our story that includes fishers lost at sea. Our story that witnesses the destruction of our natural world by our own hands. Our story that includes neighbors who did not have access to potable water. Our stories of thirst, and hunger, our stories when justice fails and violence takes over, our stories when we ask how long, how long must we sing this song? But through the waters of creation, the waters of birth, of life, of death, through the waters of recreation, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You know, uh, when you think about water and we think about the words associated with it, like cleansing, like quenching of thirst, uh, it really is very intimate to our life experience. Water is a remarkable uh, material. It is the only, water is the only chemical to my knowledge that when it freezes, it floats. And if you think about it, if water didn't freeze and float, all of the, all of the sea life beneath the surface would perish every winter. Uh, and the other powerful thing with water is that it expands and it recreates. And so much of what we know comes from rock has been broken down gradually and slowly just simply by the effect of water. We are 
80% water, some of us a little less or more than others. But outside of oxygen, water is the thing we cannot survive with out for very long. We aren't, uh, we aren't taking up the offering in the traditional fashion uh, uh, because of COVID. There is an offering plate at the back on the way out if you have something with, uh, that you would like to give. And uh, otherwise, if you, some of us are giving by par and some of us you can, are giving directly through uh, delivery to the, to the office or through uh, e-transfer and you can find all the information you like about that on the website. But as we know, offerings do continue. I will, we'll offer this offertory prayer just to say thanks of those gifts that all of us have given. God of grace, we know you want justice rolling down like water. Accept these gifts from our hands which we cast upon the waters of your love. A generous, ever-flowing stream feeding the hungry and helping those in need. Accept these gifts for the work of your church. Amen. Let us pray. Baptismal God, your grace springs forth creation's song. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the water's surface. During the flood, water carried Noah's family to safety, and creation was reborn. On water, Moses floated down the river to bring your people home. Through water, the Israelites were led and the Egyptians were defeated. From water, Jesus made wine at the wedding party. Over water, Jesus walked and calmed the chaotic tempest. Throughout scripture, water is bent to your will and used to prove your power over creation. We remember how your son, our Savior, walked to the river to meet your prophet John, how he was baptized with all of them and all of us, how the heavens opened up and the Spirit descended, and your happiness was showered upon all who were there. We give you thanks that you find happiness in us. For why else would you have sent your Son to save us? We give you thanks that your Son was baptized with us, that through him our baptisms seal our place within your fold. Gracious God, Surely you know that there are still many within your fold that cry out for the fulfillment of baptismal promises, for those who feel grief and sadness, for those who did not go home for Christmas, for those who are shivering homeless on a cold winter's night, for those who, like you, were born into poverty, for those who seek employment, and for those who have lost employment, for those dealing with chronic pain and illness, for those who the virus has separated us and created distance. Remind us, God, from whom we are baptized, that our baptisms seal us to go out and serve those who need your grace. Help us to remember that our baptisms are sufficient for our calling. Help us to remember that our baptisms are not merely a Kodak moment, a hallmark card memory of nostalgia, but that each baptism is the beginning of faith's formation, a journey that both begins and ends with death and resurrection. God, keep us strong, keep us faithful. Lead us beside still waters so that we might abide with you and you in us. This we pray in your holy name.
and pray together as your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as we soon leave this place, let us remember the hope that is in front of us, the, the sign of light outside, the glimmer of sparkle in the eyes of people we haven't seen in so long. Let us remember where the, the true seat of our spirit lies. May the water of God's grace surround you and uphold you. May your baptisms strengthen you for the world and the work ahead. And may the spirit that descended upon Jesus at his baptism fall upon your shoulders as you seek to do God's will. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 633 in Voices United. And I'll call our vocalist back up to the, to the stage, please. Thank you.